Next generation. Okay, for this video I'm going to hack this Okapi so it will give you a, a data communication port, a serial data communication port, 9600 board. Um, I'll list the, uh, the full specifications of that later in the video. So first of all, with the Okapi you just remove the inlet uh, extension wires with the inlet thermistors. Put that to one side. Yeah. Already unscrewed the box there, the lid. We'll take that off. And then we need to unscrew the two bolts at the back of the PCB. You can see that in the camera. Let's unscrew those two. Remove them. Just remove the uh, spaces from the front of the board if you've glued those in. Um, you might just want to lift up the front of the board to try and snap the glue out of place. Take, take away those two spaces like that. And remove the board, unplug the power supply, loosen up the uh, tightening nut and the cable gland. Just pull through some wire so you can work on the circuit board by itself. Right, so this board, again, this, this feature is only available on the Akapi 2, um, basically because the microcontroller has sufficient memory which enabled me to put in all of the uh, code and tables and everything for the serial communication. So the, the serial port is on this pin, which is carrying down from the top left pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's the second one up from the bottom. And uh, this microcontroller can source up to 25 milliamps of current per output. And we're just going to make sure it, it does no more than that by putting in a, a 220 ohm resistor in here and then that'll give us an output on that pin hole there. Also the board has uh, one, two, three attach points for an external ground. It has one, two attachments there for five volts, so if you need to tap into the five volts for anything, um, such as uh, powering a, an Arduino or basic stamp, the, there is uh, a little bit of power available on the board to tap into on that 5 volt channel and if you want to tap into the 12 volts you you might be able to do that by just rigging something on the uh, fuse clips you can probably do it that way if you desire okay so let's get that 220 ohm resistor in place so this video is really for the enthusiast uh, electronics enthusiast who wants to tap into the Okapi and get the data it is transmitting so you can either view that real time to see what the Akapi is doing at any moment to see how your solar collector is doing at any one given moment or for data logging for this demonstration today I'm actually going to wire in a PL2303 USB dongle and uh, with that I'm going to plug that into a laptop Windows 8.1 laptop and show you how to do some data logging. Okay, so there's the 220 ohm resistor. So again, we just match that up with the two holes on the board relating to pin 8 on the microcontroller. Just slot that through. We've also made up these two wires. Two wires here. So I put a couple of contact female contact pins. I'm going to feed those through the cable gland when I'm done here and uh, put on, put on a, a receptacle there so the communications port is then accessible from outside of the box. Okay, so the blue I'm going to feed in next to the resistor that we've just mounted. And the black I'm just going to slot into one of those available ground holes. Again, so like the, the Akapi, I made this board so it is serviceable. Um, Hence the, the socket for the microcontroller, the socket for the fuse. There are a lot of through hole components here, so if anything does break, you should be able to fix it rather than just put the thing in the garbage.
Okay, so those four connections are now in place. So it's the uh, two terminals, the two leads from the resistor, and the ground connection, and then the output from through the resistor from the uh, output on pin eight on the microcontroller. All right, so we'll just reassemble the board inside the box here. Feed those two new wires through the cable gland. Remember, just tighten this nut up as much as possible, and that gives a lot of a lot more space for the power supply barrel. And obviously, this the job of the cable gland is to to secure all the wires in place. And we just bend the back of the power supply lead back around the cable gland, and there we go. And we just put the bolts back in place. Put the risers back in place as well. Again, with these risers, you and the spacers, you might want to glue them. It's completely up to you. The board should hold them in place, and they don't really do anything anyway. It's just more for aesthetics. And it keeps the uh, solder connections off the bottom of the board, but there isn't really sufficient heat or anything in there that could cause a problem. All right, let's just double check, make sure we haven't snagged anything up here. So we've got the two new wires running through the cable gland. Cable gland is nice and tight. Power supply is locked in place underneath the cable gland. So I'm going to use one of these two position receptacles. I'm going to put the black into the, the square end and there's a triangular end. The black into the square end, that's the ground. And then the transmit pin We'll go into the triangular end there. So again, square end, triangular end, black in the square, transmit into the triangular end, and we'll put the lid back on. There we go, so doing it this way just makes it nice and tidy. And of course, if you, whenever you're done, uh, logging the data or watching the data, you can just unplug an extension wire from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is attach uh, this little PL2303 USB dongle. Um, so it's basically TTL. Uh, this outputs a 5 volt signal. And the dongle will convert that 5 volt TTL signal, signal into a USB signal. And that will allow the, uh, the computer to see it using a terminal um, emulation program such as uh, PuTTY uh, or Hyperterminal on one of the older Windows systems. So what I've done already is made up this wire which just basically it has you know the two two male pins there connects into the receptacle here that we just installed into the Okepi and then we have two two little pins here which just connect directly onto the dongle so the red is going to be the receive. So again, it's the transmit from the board goes into the receive pin on this dongle. I actually picked up this dongle from China. I think it was about a dollar. So pretty, pretty inexpensive. There we go. So just plug in the ground. So therefore, we have the ground, which is the black wire, and the red, which is the transmit from the microcontroller plugged into the RXD on the dongle. Now I'm just going to tidy this up. I'm going to put some insulation, some shrink, heat shrink on there just to make it a permanent installation. There we go. I've added some heat shrink onto both ends there. just looks a little tidier. So I'll plug that in. And then the other end, so I've covered that in heat shrink as well, so it just looks a little bit better and uh, those contacts are now uh, a little more sealed than they were before. Okay, we're going to plug the sensors back in, the two inlet sensors, so we can test the unit and see what it does. We don't need the fans plugged in for this test. There we go, so we have the two 
the green and white pairs, the two outlet uh, thermistors, temperature sensors, and the two inlet temperature sensors. I'm going to plug in the Yokapi now, give it some power. And I'm now going to go onto the PC and demonstrate how to set this up for data logging. Okay, so I'm going to plug the uh, USB dongle into this Windows 8.1 laptop. And let's take a look at the device manager before we go any further. Okay, so there's the device manager. We'll look under ports, common LPT for the prolific USB to serial COM port. So just make a note here it's on COM port 4. Now we need to check the driver. Basically, um, this PL2303 chip isn't technically compatible with Windows 8.1. Uh, but there is a workaround to that, which is to download an older version of the driver. Um, the driver that Windows Update, or the latest driver from Prolific, is the version 1.9, which is dated 2013. And the older version I've used here is the version 1.5, which is dated 2011. So I'll just make sure that's installed. There we go. I'll just check to make sure there are no warning marks or anything on there. So again, it's Comport 4. Now you'll need terminal emulation software to communicate with the Yokapi. I've chosen to use Putty today. Let's load that up. Okay, so for the Putty configuration, go straight down to the serial connection, change it over to the COM port that the USB is plugged into. So we need to change that to COM port 4. Uh, the rest of the settings are default, apart from flow control. Change flow control to none. So it's speed, 9600 board, data bits 8, stop bits 1, parity none, flow control none. Switch it over to serial on the session, and then we can open the session. Okay, so straight away you can see the Okapi is blasting out data every second. We have an identifier here, which is the uh, serial number of the Akapi. So if you plug in more than one system, you should be able to identify them from the serial number. And then we've got uh, a number of temperatures, one for each inlet, one for each outlet. We have a fan speed represented of a percentage of maximum. And also we have the ambient temperature. All of the temperatures are outputted in, output in Fahrenheit. That just gives a bit of, bit of extra granularity of a uh, Celsius, of course, Celsius would you'd have to have a, a decimal point in there in fractions, but with uh, with Fahrenheit, there's no need. Okay, so I'm just going to play around with some of the uh, sensors so you can see the change. I've got one of the inlet sensors. I'm just holding it between my finger and thumb, and you can see that's already risen up to 81 Fahrenheit, 82 Fahrenheit. Okay, I'll leave go of that. Let it cool down. See so that reacts very quickly. So already back down to 76 Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm now holding one of the outlet temperature sensors. We can see the fan is switched on. So we're on outlet number one. I've already raised the temperature up to 81 Fahrenheit. And you can see the fan is revving up. It's already up to 26%, 27% of maximum speed. Got to leave go of that. Let that cool down. There you go, you can see that cooling down. So you can use this uh, terminal emulation software to, to log all of the data and uh, you can put that into a spreadsheet if you like and create a chart with it so you can see um, how, your, how your system performs and perhaps make modifications to the system and see if they improve the system and um, basically take it from there. Okay, so thanks for watching this video and please let us know if you have any further questions. Next generation. Next generation.